Welcome to the Asset Reliability at Work podcast. Endless journey of delight and profitability. I think some people use it as a derogatory term <laughs> towards accountants. Being visible to the employees is important. Hi, Asset Reliability at Work podcast listeners. Here we are again with another episode of Asset Reliability at Work, and we are with Jeff Nievenhoven. He's a senior consultant at Lifecycle Engineering. He's a ProSide certified change management professional, as well as instructor in the change management discipline. We're here today to discuss the ProSide ADCAR model for change management and how each step is used to facilitate a successful change management initiative within manufacturing organizations. So the title of this episode is called The Five-Step Process to Successful Organizational Change. So we will be talking about uh, the ProSci ADCAR model for change. Uh, so let's get right into it, Jeff. First and foremost, thank you so much for being a part of the Asset Reliability at Work podcast, and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. So, so let's first describe what ADCAR is and kind of how it's used to help manufacturing organizations manage change. Well, let me begin here by setting the foundation for successful change. You know, organizational change occurs when groups and departments within that organization change. But in order for those departments and those groups to change, those employees within those areas must change as well. And it's only when those affected employees by the change make the transition will the organization and those departments realize successful outcomes of the original change intent. So it's really dependent on people changing in order for an organization to change. You know, and this is the basis of the ADCAR model. Change happens at the individual level. Having a clearly defined vision, you know, a structured project plan, a well-designed solution in itself will not assure successful change at an individual level. Those are all good things to have and things that we need, but they won't necessarily drive change. In order for employees to adopt and fully utilize and be proficient with the change, there must be a high level of awareness on why the change is being undertaken and what the change is about. The employees must have a desire to participate and engage in the change. And a lot of times we talk about employee buy-in and uh, that relates to the desire. Uh, once they have that, we need to make sure they have knowledge on how to change. And once they have that knowledge on how to change, we have to provide them then the ability and the opportunities to perform the change. And finally, once they start to practice the change, they start to adopt it and utilize it, we have to have a reinforcing system in place to help sustain that change. You know, those are the elements of the ADCAR model that each employee must achieve for change to be successful. It helps us understand an individual's needs during a change at work or at home or wherever it might be, and it directs what kind of support we can provide to help them successfully make that transition. The ADCAR model is also a tool that we can use to evaluate our change effectiveness. So when applied to a manufacturing uh, change initiative, the ADCAR model guides leaders and the project team and others within the organization on what activities will help foster change at an individual level. And again, once we change at an individual level, departments change, and then the organization has successful change as well. Now, moving along here, Jeff, before we really get into and talk about the individual phases of ADCAR, can you briefly define what we're talking about when we say organizational change? Sure. You know, when we talk about organizational change, uh, we're thinking about things that need to happen differently within our business. Uh, but it's no different than what we see every day. You know, change is constant. And we see it all around us, at work, in our communities, and even in our homes. Change is nothing really new. It's existed from the beginning of time. And change can range from small incremental change to very large disruptive change. And within our business environments, we can see changes involving job roles, organizational restructuring, mergers and acquisitions, changes to business processes, those supporting systems and tools, and really anything in between. Just about anything we do or interact with in the workplace can be affected by change. And in today's workplace, there are usually multiple changes going on at once. You know, it's the continuous and constant improvement of our business processes and how we work to remain competitive, meet our customers' demands, achieve shareholder expectations, possibly meet or exceed new regulatory requirements, and ultimately provide a safe and rewarding work environment for our employees. 
Now, managing the people side of change effectively is more important than ever. So what is change management? Change management is a structured process which is very similar to project management methodologies, something that we're very familiar with and do quite often. But the difference between the two is that project management teams focus on the hard side of change, the technical solution, so to speak, while the change management team focuses on the soft side of change, the people side. And this is where the ADCAR model comes into place. It takes into account both the technical and the people elements of change. Well, thanks for making that so clear, Jeff. It's a matter of the technical and the people side of change. I think you brought that into our real lives very um, articulately. You're absolutely right. I couldn't agree more, Tara. Uh, Very well done, Jeff. But now let's talk about the individual phases in more detail. You gave us an overview of ADCAR and starting with A for the awareness piece. Now let's really dive deep into that and tell us more about that piece. All right. So with awareness, what we're talking about here is, is answering the what and why of change. It's really where the change process begins for employees. Ensuring our employees are aware of the business reasons for the change is a critical first step in leading employees through the change process. Creating awareness could be as simple as explaining that an existing software is no longer being supported by a vendor and that a new one is required to continue business. Or it could be as complex as explaining that global business conditions, increasing regulatory requirements, and customer expectations are requiring the organization to undertake a global improvement initiative that will transform the business, its processes, its supporting systems, and associated job roles. But regardless of the level of change, whether it's small or large, we all want to know the reasoning behind it. Without awareness, employees are more likely to resist change. The lack of awareness is the number one cause for resistance. And to give you just a personal example, I recently had an event like this happen to me where Something was changed in my life, and I had no heads up on why it happened. And when that change happened, (laughs) I pushed back. I went back to seek out more information before I moved forward with it. And uh, it's something that happens around us constantly. But that's where change begins. It begins with awareness. We need to know the what and the why of change. Perfectly said. And I just want to recap because it's so important, that last part you just said. Awareness is answering the what and why part of the change process. Okay, let's move on now and let's talk about desire. All right, with desire, this is one of the most challenging elements of the ADCAR model that we're faced with. And the challenge is that desire is one's own choice to either participate in the change or not participate. At the end of the day, it's an individual's choice to choose whether or not they're going to engage or buy in. But the good news is there's a lot we can do to influence that choice. And one of the key contributors to fostering desire is to help our employees understand WIFM. WIFM stands for what's in it for me. And this is where the employee's manager plays a key role. You know, someone's manager or supervisor, the person they directly report to, tend to have a more personal relationship with the employee versus senior leaders. They have a better understanding of their day in, day out work And they can translate the change into meaningful terms and answer the question, what's in it for me? Through one-on-one conversations, managers can uncover their employees' personal reasons for resisting, and they can aid in removing any barriers that might keep the employee from buying into the change. So that was awareness and desire. Jeff, can you tell us about knowledge? Sure. Knowledge is the next step in our ADCAR model. And once our employees have a high level of awareness of the what and the why of the change, and they've decided to participate in the change, our desire piece, now we can move forward with transferring knowledge to them. All right, knowledge translated into common terms is usually called training by most organizations. In order to effectively progress to the next phase of change, employees must now learn how to work or function differently. Training and or knowledge building should be relatable and meaningful to the employee's job role and duties. And training can vary in levels from informative training to in-depth hands-on training. But one word of caution I always like to uh, share with folks is that in some organizations, they use training sessions to act as an awareness communication session. And we want to avoid this by all means. And if we got into a point in our project where we're using the training session to create the awareness of the what and why, 
we need to really stop and pause for a moment and get that information to employees first before we begin to introduce the knowledge on how to change. Because a lot of folks, when they attend training, if they don't have that basic understanding, they may not see why this training is needed because they do not have that uh, original understanding of what the change is about. And essentially, employees will not be ready to learn unless they know the what, why, and have the desire to change. So now as we get into ability, I, I assume that this is where we talk about maybe demonstrating your, your, your knowledge on this. So go ahead and tell me about ability. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's a great way to put it there with uh, demonstrating. You know, when we're in this phase, this is where employees uh, actually start to perform the change. This is where they take the knowledge that we've just given to them and they turn it into practice. You know, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road. Having knowledge on how to change and having the ability to actually perform the change is very different. You know, some employees will have the experience and the natural ability to perform the new way, but for others, this could be a very challenging and frustrating time as they learn to do something different. And this is where it's really important that we apply a coaching at this time and we encourage our employees, we provide them with feedback, we set them in the right environment so they can start to practice and apply the new way of doing work. And this phase takes some time as employees will have different entry levels and abilities. So we need to allow employees time to try, to practice, to ask questions. And the good thing is, is once we start to see ability being achieved, that's when we start to see the actual changes take place. So awareness, desire, knowledge, ability. And what's next, Jeff? Well, the last step of our ADCAR model is reinforcement. All right. And this is a very important step. And I'll start out by saying a lot of organizations lose sight of this key piece. Uh, they get to the implementation phase, and that's really where we see the abilities, uh, the ability phase coming to life. People are starting to apply the change. They're starting to make some progress. And a lot of companies will kind of, you know, veer off and take on the next project or think the change will sustain itself. And in reality is, is that we really need to have a reinforcing system in place to help employees to continue down that path of change adoption and utilization and becoming proficient at it. You know, the past practice uh, has a very strong hold on individuals. And even when those habits and practices are not known to be good at all, employees can gravitate back toward them. You think about in change, uh, stretching a rubber band out. That rubber band's going to relax forward or it's going to relax backwards. And without a reinforcing system in place, we tend to revert to our old ways. So this is why it's critical for us to make sure that we have systems in place and that we have communications in place and that we're observing the change and we're giving employees feedback. Uh, if we don't have that, employees will start to find workarounds if they're struggling with the change, and they may even revert to the old way of doing business. So thanks for so clearly explaining ADCAR to us, Jeff. One question for you about the model itself. How important is it to follow these steps in order, A-D-K-A-R? That's, you know, that's a great question, and I get asked that all the time. Um, it's funny how people want to know if there's any shortcuts or not, but you know, the textbook answer is yes. You should follow the model in order. There's typically too much at risk uh, when bypassing any of the steps in the model. Organizational change is occurring at a rapid pace today. Project budgets, resources, schedules, and expectations are on a tight timeline. And when we don't follow the process, we risk not meeting those objectives. But that being said, I always like to recommend applying a good dose of common sense to our change management activities. Not all change is created equal, and we shouldn't expect that one size approach fits all. Our change management efforts should be a result-oriented, scalable, and not solely about the tools or models. You know, tools and models exist to guide us in our efforts and leading employees through change, and for the majority of the time, we need to follow them. But we shouldn't be so rigid in application that we lose sight of what we're ultimately trying to achieve, and that's helping employees make that transition successfully. So one size doesn't fit all, but you should still consider and you should still follow the ad car model in sequence. So I'm sure there are a lot of listeners out there who are really inspired by today's session and want to know more about change management and the ad car model. The Lifecycle Institute offers a ProSide change management certification course. Can you tell me more about the program and how this program helps manufacturing organizations? 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, Life Cycle Institute is proud to be the first ProSci authorized training provider in the United States. And as a ProSci authorized training provider, we offer the most comprehensive options for change management training. Through our ProSci classes, LCE instructors will help your organization begin to build competency in change management. And we offer multiple training programs that range from a three-day in-depth certification class for practitioners where they get to apply actual changes in their workplace during the class to learn the model. And we also offer classes that range from you know, single sessions to multi-day sessions that will transfer knowledge and information on change management best practices and methods and techniques for your senior leaders, uh, your mid-managers and frontline supervisors, as well as your employees. You know, chances are your company is undergoing some sort of change right now, or it will be in the very near future. And success will be directly dependent on your organization's ability to lead employees through the change transition effectively and efficiently. These classes are tailored to do just that, to equip and enable your employees in successfully leading and managing change. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the Asset Reliability at Work po- podcast. We're going to wrap up here right now with the five-step process to successful organizational change, where we talked about the ADCAR model, which is a pro-sci model itself. So thank you so much for taking the time and being on our show, Jeff. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you. I did. Uh, it, was, it was good to be able to uh, just share some insights and experiences around change management and uh, look forward to uh answering any questions anyone might have about ADCAR or change management in general. Well, and that's really great because I hope that the listeners here who are interested and want to learn more, that they will go to um, our web links and the resources that Derek is going to post for the podcast. Um, We're going to share with our listeners a ProSide Change Management Certification Program brochure, um, a change management link to our webpage, and also a link to Jeff Nevenhoven's profile on LinkedIn. So you can ask him those questions that are burning about change management. Well, that'll do it for us today. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in for another episode of the Asset Reliability at Work podcast. See you next time. Hey, listeners, one more thing before you go. If you have any feedback for the show or you have maybe some suggestions for upcoming topics you'd love to hear about, we'd like to hear from you. So there's two ways to get in contact with us. The first is on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at LCE underscore today. So be sure to follow us. And then the other way is to email the show at podcast at LCE.com. Once again, thank you for joining the show. And we look forward to more episodes on the Asset Reliability at Work podcast.